Today we will be working in Unit 1, Lesson Number 12. These problems will focus on put-together word problems and take-apart word problems. Now these are very similar to the problems that we did in the last lesson. Put-together problems will use addition and take-apart problems will use subtraction. Let's go ahead and get started. There are 18 people on the playground. Eight people are on the swings. The rest are on the field. How many people are on the field? Now let's think about what we know. I know that there are 18 people on the playground. That is my total number of people. So if I was going to put this on a math mountain, 18 would be at the top because that is my total. Now we have some people on the swings and some people on the field, which works perfectly because if you look at our math mountain, there's room for two groups of people. It says there's eight people on the swings and the rest are on the field. Now we don't know what that number is yet but we can sure find out. So we can either add eight plus something gives us 18, or we could take 18, subtract eight, and see what's left over. Let's write those two equations. Eight plus something equals 18, or 18 minus eight, equals something. Now, you can choose whether you want to start at 8 and count up to 18, or if you want to start at 18 and count down 8. I'm going to start from the bottom. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight plus ten gives me eighteen. That means that there are ten people, our problem uses the word people, on the field. So if we can, using a math mountain is a great strategy when I'm comparing two groups of people. Over here, we had the swings and we had the field. There's two groups, so it makes it really easy for a math mountain. Let's take a look at the next problem. Nine kids are on the computers. Five kids are with Mrs. Krause. How many kids are there all together? Now let's think about that quickly. We have two groups of kids, nine are on the computer, and five are with Mrs. Kraus. The question is, how many kids are there all together? Hmm, when I hear the word all together, the first thing that pops into my mind is the words in all. That means the total. So I want to find the total number of kids. There are nine on the computer and five with Mrs. Kraus. So I'm looking for my total in this problem. Let's write a quick equation. Nine plus five equals something because we're looking for that total. Now, I'm going to use touch points, but you can also use counting up with your fingers. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That means that there are 14 total students, or in this problem, they use the word kids, in this class or this group. Nine are on the computer and five are working with Mrs. Krause. Here's another example. Miss Debussy makes some cookies. Oh, yum, that sounds delicious. 
six cookies are chocolate chip and 12 cookies are peanut butter. How many cookies did Miss Debussy make in all? Oh, this is a great one. So I know that I have chocolate chip cookies and I have peanut butter cookies. That's two different groups. But the question is, how many in all? Just like the last problem, in all is a keyword for my total. So I'm going to be looking for my total at the top. Let's put our other numbers here at the bottom. And we can make an equation. 6 plus 12 equals something. Now, I'm going to use some touch points again. 12 is my bigger number. So I'm going to say 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You could, of course, use a different strategy if that's one that you've practiced at school. But we should still get 18. And as you can see, our label here is cookies. That sounds delicious. What's your favorite kind of cookie? The next question is about Mary. Mary has 14 cousins. Nine are girls and the rest are boys. How many are boys? Now let's think about this. It says she has 14 cousins. Hmm, cousins means boys and girls. So I'm thinking that that is our total number of cousins. Because if there's 14 in all, then some can be boys and some can be girls. In our problem, it says that nine are girls and the rest are boys. I don't know how many that is yet. So let's write an equation. We could do two different equations. We could say 9 plus something equals 14. Or we could start with our king of the mountain, our sum, and we could subtract 9 to find our missing number. I'm going to count up in this problem. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's see how many I went up. One, two three, four, five. That means that she has five boy cousins. So she has nine girl cousins and five boy cousins. Here's our last problem together for this lesson. Julia has six blue crayons and some orange crayons. She has 14 crayons in all. How many orange crayons does Julia have? So we're working with crayons here. Now, I know that we have blue crayons and the problem also said that we have orange crayons. That's two different groups. So if I was going to put that on the math mountain, I have six blue and some orange. We don't know how many that is yet. But it also tells us that she has 14 crayons in all. That means that 14 is my total number of crayons, my sum or my total. Let's go ahead and use a counting up strategy to figure out how many orange crayons she has. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's count those dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means she has eight orange crayons. So six plus, that was our mystery number, eight equals 14. Or we could do subtraction. Remember, the king loves subtraction. He always comes first. 14 minus 6 equals 8. 
So she has eight orange crayons. Nice job, second graders. Remember, just like yesterday's lesson, make sure you take your time and really think about, should I add or should I subtract? Also think about, can I put my numbers on a math mountain? That's a very helpful strategy for us in second grade.